All right, good, good evening and welcome to the 2022-2023 Minnesota Honor Society induction ceremony. My name is Paul Marlin and I'm one of the counselors um, and I'm also the MHS advisor. You'll notice I am not Dr. Miller, so you have the privilege to listen to me twice today. Um, I would like to thank everyone for um, showing up here in the pack as well as those who are watching on live stream. Uh, this is one of my favorite events of the school year because we get to honor some of the school's highest achieving students. Um, these students have distinguished themselves in academics, leadership, service, and character. As inductees into Minnesota Honor Society, you're being recognized for your hard work, strong character, and for being excellent role models. Each and every one of you are assets to our school and our community. I'm incredibly proud of each and every one of you. On behalf of all the staff at Waseca High School, I'd also like to congratulate you on being inducted here today. Parents and guardians, I'd also like to recognize you as well because we know you play a major role in their lives. Your dedication, guidance, and encouragement has helped instill an appreciation for learning and has contributed to their success. Before our first speaker, I want to remind you, um, we have the privilege of Jenny Pena being here to take pictures, so you're welcome to still take pictures throughout the night. However, we want you to be able to sit back and relax and enjoy the ceremony. I will be sharing all the pictures out to families um, within the next few days, as, long, as well as recording of this ceremony. Okay? With that being said, I'd like to um, welcome our first speaker, Lindsay Kopetsky. When we think of a leader, we often think of someone who is confident, compassionate, determined, communicative, kind, and decisive. We can all agree that these are important qualities of a leader, whether it be a captain of a sports team, a section leader, a drum major of the marching band, or leader in the classroom. Every student sitting on this stage and in the seats in front of me show these qualities in one way or another. However, I believe that there is one quality that connects all of them together. It is the overarching trait that all leaders should strive to have and one that oftentimes gets forgotten, and that is integrity. By definition, integrity is the quality of being honest and having strong moral principles, moral uprightness. But how can we as leaders exemplify this? I've found that in most cases, showing integrity doesn't need to be via grand gestures. More often than not, the smallest actions we do every day show who we really are. We can all agree that it's easy to say that you will take the initi initiative to lead. The true leaders, however, will actually carry them out. Whether that means arriving at a practice or rehearsal early, or helping out wherever and whenever you can, leadership always lies in the details. Another layer of integrity is attitude. This is one of the most important, yet hardest parts about being a leader. It is what the members of your teams, sections, or organizations see. The attitude of the group depends on how the leaders act. It is said that we need to lead by example, and this couldn't be more true. As leaders, we need to learn how to put our negativity, frustration, and opinions aside so that the members of our activities remain positive. It is a leader's job to be the cheerleader for their activity, meaning that we need to lift people up and encourage them to do their best. This also means that we need to do our best. Leaders must put all of their energy into what they are doing. If we aren't trying during practice or rehearsal, those around us won't either. We need to be excited and put effort into what we are doing so that those we are leading do the same. These actions may seem arbitrary on the surface, but they are what's most visible to those around us. Our coaches, teachers, and community members see these parts of us displayed in all we do. My challenge for the returning and newly inducted Minnesota Honor Society members is this, to lead with integrity and to be a positive role model within our activities, classrooms, and community. Thank you. Our next speaker will be Grace Lapidus. Okay. My bad. <laughs> 
Uh, my father once said that the two people you should never give a microphone to is Grace Lapidus and Paul Davis, so this is half of his worst nightmare. But I promise I'm not going to go off the rails. I'm actually just going to talk about service. <laughs> Minnesota Honor Society is a community. Like all communities, there is a level of work that must be done to maintain it. What makes Minnesota Honor Society special is that the work we do to uphold it not only serves its members, but also the greater Wasika community. By completing our volunteer hours, we are helping our town maintain what it is known for, caring for one another. From our service experience, we can learn a variety of real world lessons, work ethic, empathy, and commitment to growth. By serving other people, we get to peer into the lives of those different from ourselves. This helps create empathy and understanding in a world where that is what we need most. Everyone who has been previously inducted or is being inducted into the Minnesota Honor Society tonight has demonstrated a desire and ability to learn, not just in the classroom, but in our community as well. As young adults, we will take the compassion for others and commitment to our community that we learn here in Wasika and bring it into the other cities, colleges, and workplaces where we find ourselves in the future. For no matter where we go, one thing will always be the same. There will always be people to help, and there will always be people to learn from. That is why service is such an integral part of what the Minnesota Honors Society stands for. In an organization that values hard work, learning, and dedication, service is something that checks each and every box. It is what creates future leaders with the ability to understand and help the people around them. It is what opens the mind to possibilities that would have remained unknown if we were to only stay in the classroom. It is what has the power to ignite the passion that will turn us into the hope for a better tomorrow. But best of all, it reminds us of what really matters. Extending a hand to the people around us who help make our community what it is. Being in the Minnesota Honor Society not only looks great to others, but it makes you feel pride in yourself and everything you've accomplished. Though you should feel amazing and intelligent when you excel in an area, whether it be arts or sports, you should be self-reflecting and evaluating your choices, conversations, and internal thoughts. When I asked Mr. Hopkins what moral was most prominent to him, he told me that it was self-reflection. Mr. Hopkins, by far, was one of my favorite teachers during my time here at the school. And that goes for the rest of the students up on the stage. We are so honored and grateful to have him speak for us tonight. Please welcome Mr. Hopkins. Man, thank you so much for that excellent introdu introduction, Jackie. It's an honor to be invited to speak here tonight. And tonight we are here to celebrate and honor the hard work and dedication that you have all shown throughout your time here at Wasika Public Schools. We are here to celebrate your successes. You should be proud of yourselves and proud of your classmates. I feel privileged to be standing here celebrating your successes with you. We sit here among academic honor students, all conference athletes, and students who somehow manage to balance rigorous coursework and volunteer opportunities, sports, jobs, family, and friendships. These young adults completely embody the four tenets of MHS, scholarship, leadership, service, but in my opinion, the most important one, character. Scholarship, leadership, and service will bring you all great successes in life, but true happiness stems from your character. Being inducted into MHS is a tremendous accomplishment, but with accomplishments comes the expectation that you have to be the best at everything you do. In these moments, the only thing that matters is your character. 
as a social studies teacher, I constantly find myself looking to the past for guidance and advice. And I'm drawn to the teachings of three Stoics of ancient Rome, Seneca, Musonius Rufus, and Marcus Aurelius. It was Seneca who, sitting on a rock in the middle of the Mediterranean Sea, after being falsely exiled from Rome, wrote, believe me, it's better to produce the balance sheet of your own life than that of the grain market, telling us that we should take stock of who we are rather than focus on our own results. He inspired the question, at the end of your life, which is more valuable, your understanding of who you are, your compassion, your happiness, or the amount of money you've made? We can be very good at what we do, and we can even be paid very well for it. But satisfaction comes from knowing yourself and what you stand for. True happiness comes from your character. After Seneca's untimely death, called for by his former student and then Emperor Nero, Seneca's colleague and fellow philosopher, Musonius Rufus, continued to teach and promote strong character in Rome a decision he knew would seal his fate as Emperor Nero exiled him the very same year Seneca was put to death. Even in the face of exile, Musonius Rufus asked us the question, how much, how much better is it to be known for doing well by many than for living extravagantly? How much more worthy than spending on sticks and stones is it to spend on people? The more impressive person is the one who works for the betterment of their fellow humans than the person who possesses the finest trinkets and toys. The more impressive person is the person who seeks first to understand themselves before judging others. Those that rely on their character to do good in the world are the ones who truly make a difference. 100 years later, as Emperor Marcus Aurelius was facing a revolt of his own people, threatened by foreign armies, and amidst a military campaign in Central Europe. He held personal character above all else. In his journal, he wrote, I am constantly amazed by how easily we love ourselves above all others, yet we put more stock into the opinions of others than we do our own estimation of self. How much credence we give to the opinions of our peers, and how little our very own. Marcus Aurelius knew that his happiness was not tied to what others thought of him, but what he thought of himself. True happiness comes from character. 2,000 years ago, these men understood that character is the most important tenant of life. In the face of exile, war, and death, they stayed true to themselves. Today, we live in a very different world, Although many of us do not face the mortal dangers that these men faced, the body's stress response to adversity today is virtually identical. It's virtually the same stress that Marcus Aurelius felt as he was being pulled in 10 different directions and didn't know where to start. By knowing yourselves and what you stand for, the path forward will become clear. The Stoics of ancient Rome believed that all humans had one purpose, one job on this earth, to be a good person. So take advantage of the opportunities to help your fellow humans. Seek first to understand yourself before you understand others. And above all, take calculated risks and don't fear failure. Failure can be a great teacher. Tonight, we celebrate your successes in life as you truly deserve all of the praise we can give. Continue to embody scholarship, leadership, service, and character as you begin new adventures in life. Thank you very much for your time. Congratulations to our MHS inductees. Have a great night. I'm going to be introducing the current members of MHS. 
Samantha M. Azure, daughter of Jamie and Sam Azure. Leah K. Bartell, daughter of Sam and Janet Bartell. Maya J. Bartell, daughter of Crystal and Brad Bartell. Miranda J. Breck, daughter of Todd and Kelly Breck. Jersey J. Castle, daughter of Jenna Castle and Todd Bainan. Hanaro Delgado Jr., son of Hanaro Delgado Sr. and Alberta Delgado. Haley L. Detmer, daughter of Matt and Abby Detmer. Ella A. Dufault, daughter of Barry and Stacy Dufault. Joseph S. Feldkamp, son of Greg and Jeannie Feldkamp. Isabella S. Hadley, daughter of Mike and Jeannie Hadley. Aubrey G. Hansen, daughter of Steve and Barb Hansen. Charlotte A. Hargith, daughter of Jerome and April Hargith. Alexander R. Honstead, son of Rich and Amanda Honstead. Kaya C. Hoof, daughter of Donna and Scott Gertler. Cecilia R. Hutmeyer, daughter of John and Christy Hutmeyer. Megan M. Kanawisher, daughter of Aaron and Deanna Kanawisher. William C. King, son of Brad and Tina King. Lindsay M. Kopetsky, daughter of Craig and Tracy Kopetsky. Griffin J. Krautkramer, son of Amy Krautkramer. Grace K. Lapidus, daughter of Tony and Chris Lapidus. Avery J. Matson, daughter of Chris and Leslie Madsen. Jacqueline F. Mathern, daughter of Luke and Bobby Mathern. Christian M. Rodriguez, son of Debbie and Nathan Rodriguez. Chloe G. Schumacher, daughter of Joe and Andrea Schumacher. Haley C. Summers, daughter of Greg and Jenny Summers. Chloe N. Wad, daughter of Trent and Carrie Wad. Hannah L. Wilder, daughter of Jesse and Sarah Wilder. Hello, I am Spirit of the Torch. I represent the emblem of the Minnesota Honor Society. I symbolize our purpose to follow the light of truth. May the flame of the spirit kindle the knowledge that is yours and make it of the living thing. May it be a beacon and an inspiration to guide the footsteps of other seekers of truth. As the keystone is placed by the builder to hold a perfect arch in perpetual stability, so the structure of our education must be held firm and true to the purpose of life by the virtues represented in this symbol. Characters, light your way. Scholarship means a commitment to learning. A student is willing to spend hours in reading and study, knowing the lasting benefits of a cultivated mind. We should continue to learn even when formal education has ended, for education ends only with life. Knowledge is one great element in life which leads to the highest success, and it can be acquired in only one way, through diligence and effort. Learning furnishes the lamp by which we read the past and the light which illuminates the future. Candidates have the charge to continually expand their world through, through the opportunities inherent in scholarship. My office is service. Service can be described in various ways. In the routine of the day's work, many opportunities arise to help others. Willingness to work for the benefit of those in need without monetary compensation or without recognition is the quality we seek in our membership. We are committed to the idea of volunteering our time and abilities to the creation of a better tomorrow. All right, the uh, green candle uh, represents leadership. Uh, leadership should exert a wholesome influence on the school. 
In taking the initiative in class and school activities, the real leader strives to train and aid others to attain the same objective. The price of leadership is sacrifice, the willingness to yield one's personal interests for the interests of others. A leader has self-confidence and will go forward when others hesitate. No matter what power and resources may exist in a country, they are ineffectual without the guidance of a wise leader. Leadership is always needed. Thus, to lead is a substantive charge to each of our members and to the candidates. The purple stands for the purple candle stands for character. Character is the force within each individual which distinguishes that person from others. It gives each one individuality. It is that without which no one can respect oneself, nor hope to attain the respect of others. It is this force of character which guides one through life and when once developed, grows steadily. Character is achieved and not received. It is the product of constant action, daily striving to make the right choice. The problem of character is the problem of self-control. We must be in reality what, what we wish to appear to others. By demonstrating such qualities as reliability, honesty, and sincerity, we may hope to prove by example what we value character. Now we'll be introducing the new members. Kyle L. Oschlager, son of Chris and Jill Oschlager. Sage and Barnett, daughter of Scott Barnett and Stephanie Greenslade. Leah A. Bauman, daughter of Polly and Tim Clampy. Grace M. Bilo, daughter of Carly Bowden and the late Justin Bilo. Addison M. Bonsta, daughter of Dan and Sarah Bonsta. Mallory L. Brune, daughter of Stacy Brune and Ryan Brune. Trisha J. Cox, daughter of Corey Fosfett Cox and Eric Cox. Noah J. Dale, son of Chris and Taya Dale. Quinn W. Dale, daughter of Tim and Katie Dale. Tarun I. E. West, son of Scott and Amy Wee West. Tegan L. Flateau, daughter of Brady and Stephanie Flateau.
Eduardo Gallegos, son of Maria and Eduardo Gallegos. Sarah and Haley, daughter of Dan and Laura Haley. Emma D. Keith, daughter of Mariah and Joe Keith. Daniel B. Kohler, son of Tony Kohler and Agnieszka Suharska. Sophia C. Kraus, daughter of Tom and Christine Kraus. Ella G. Krautkramer, daughter of Amy Krautkramer. Suzanne J. Coons, daughter of David and Deanna Coons. Hannah M. LaCroix, daughter of Bob and Jen LaCroix. Time J. Lang, daughter of Scott and Kipling Lang. Hayden E. Lynch, daughter of Sarah and Jason Lynch. McKenna G. Miller, daughter of John and Heather Miller. Preston J. J. Miller, son of Jer Jeremiah and Jayla Miller. Allison M. Mummy, daughter of Matthew and Michelle Mummy. Evelyn R. O'Brien, daughter of Rhea and Ben O'Brien. Ava L. Omdivet, daughter of Aaron and Carol Omdivet. Camille E. Ring, daughter of Philip and Kara Ring. Andrew L. Robrand, son of Todd and Britta Robrand. Elizabeth E. Ressler, daughter of Matt and Shane Ressler. Oliver K. Rower, son of Charlie Rower and Ann Gerber. Jamie G. Sandbeck, daughter of Doug and Jenny Sandbeck. Nora J. Shimming, daughter of Chris and Rebecca Shimming. Cameron E. Stagman, daughter of Jill and John Stagman. Ethan J. Stenzel, son of Jason and Lisa Stenzel. Trista D. Steinhardt, daughter of Todd and Heather Steinhardt. Lucas D. Vasquez, son of David and Katie Vasquez. Addison L. Weasler, daughter of Pat and Tanya Weasler. Isabel L. Or Isabel M. Wilhelmy, daughter of Sam and Jeremy Langer.
I will now be doing the MHS pledge. I pledge myself to uphold the high purposes of the Minnesota Honor Society to which I have been selected. I will strive in every way by word and deed to make its ideals the ideals of my school and of my life. Let's give all these students another round of applause. As I said earlier, I'm incredibly proud of each and every one of you. And I know that you will, you will continue to be excellent examples of the four pillars of service, character, leadership, and scholarship in our school and in our community. There are a lot of people that are involved in making this ceremony possible. I would like to recognize these people by asking you to turn um, to the back side of your program and reading through these names. I truly appreciate all the time and energy that they put um, into preparing for the ceremony because otherwise this would not uh, have been possible. Um, I also would like to thank everyone who attended um, in person and virtually. Your, uh, we really appreciate you showing your support for all these amazing young adults. As we conclude the MHS ceremony, um, Jenny Pena will take a group picture, um, and then like always, like I said earlier, I'll send that out to all the families the next few days, as well as post this, um, the video of the ceremony online. Um, after that, I ask that you, you join us outside the pack um, for some refreshments. Thank you very much, and have a great night.